Today, I wanna to review nine of the lessons I've learned from selling over $50 million of product on the internet. So stay tuned and I will share you those nine, I'll share with you those nine things. Hello, hello, Dale Majors here, and welcome to another video of Venture Anyway. If you're new to the channel and want to become better tomorrow than you are today and you're interested in entrepreneurship, then you'll want to subscribe and follow along. So for a while now, I've been wanting to make a video where I share a lot of the different things I've learned from selling on the internet. Uh, people reach out to me a lot asking about e-commerce and how to sell online, and I've wanted to create some resources. So today, I'm actually going to be filming probably 10 episodes uh, about e-commerce and selling online, eBay, Amazon, and everything else. And this video will serve as more of an overview of a lot of the different kind of broad lessons that I learned. And then in those other videos, we're gonna dig deeper. So if you're interested in specific things then you, uh, that have to do with e-commerce, check out the playlist and you can see if any of those speak specifically to what you're curious about. All right. so. Lesson one that I learned, and I think this is one of the most important. Um, all nine are actually pretty great, if I do say so myself. But lesson one is sales are not profits. And especially when you start seeing more and more dollars come into your bank account, you get excited. You say, oh, we've got $10,000 in. We've got $20,000. Hey, we sold $100,000 last month. As it increases, you, you may start to misunderstand a little bit that money because you don't have, let me explain. With internet sales, um, you're buying internet or you're, you're buying product all at once, right? And then you're, you're spending money on marketing. You have bills that are sometimes delayed. You have shipping bills and freight that, that may be delayed as well. Um, there's a lot of money going everywhere. So one of the main numbers you see is sales, but uh, so many times, well, just, all the time, every time when we were starting our business, we would uh, do a report. When you first start selling online, you don't have good systems. You know, you may be super organized and be in QuickBooks or something, but in general, you're not gonna have amazing systems where all the numbers are flowing into a, um, into a spreadsheet or into a system and, and telling you exactly how much money you're making. So you're seeing this big number and you think that you're making a lot more than you are. So I remember my dad and I, when we, were, when we would uh, do a reconciliation at the end of the month to see how much money we made, it was always less than we thought it was gonna be. 100% of the time. I don't remember a time where I went in and made a lot more than I thought we were. Uh, and we got better at gauging that as time went on. But for the most part, every time we did a, a reconciliation, we found out that we made less than we thought. And uh, you just want to, you want to realize that. So before you go and buy a new car, before you go and, you know, <laughs> spend money on, on things that you may not need, get really clear about how much money you're making. Sales are not profits. All right, lesson two is gain an understanding of your costs in all areas of your business. So in general, if we were to break it down, then, and I'll show you on the whiteboard, if we were to break it down, then you say that you sell $100, you sell a product for $100, I've looked at a lot of e-commerce companies. I've sold a lot on my own. I have a lot of friends who have e-commerce companies. I've looked at buying a lot of different companies. So this, these are some, some averages that you can, um, that are relatively uh, um, a good uh, estimation of what it would be. So imagine you sell the product, the product sale is $100. The cost of goods sold, if you're uh, retailing other people's products is about 50%, $50. If you are manufacturing your own product, it could be less than that. But let's just imagine that we're retailing. So it's 50, 50%, that's $50. Then you have freight. And freight, just to ship the product out to the person, a lot of times we're doing free shipping these days. So you're sending the product out to them. That's another $12, about 12%. Marketing. Uh, and marketing's gonna be another 10% or so. 
If you're selling on Amazon today, I've, I've seen as many people spend upwards of, ten, upwards of 20 or 25% in marketing uh, to sell on the platform uh, or to, to market to do uh, product listing ads on Amazon. And then if you sell the product on Amazon, you have the Amazon commission as well. And that Amazon commission is 15%. On eBay, it's 10%. But we're already, like, let's look. We've got our $100 minus our 50, minus the 12 for freight, minus the 20 for marketing, minus the 15. We're getting really lean. Let me do that in my head real quick. So we've got the 50 plus the 12, that's 62, plus the plus the 20, that's 82, plus the 15, we're already at 97. So in that scenario, you would be making three cents, okay? So it's so important that you get a good understanding and a good handle on your numbers. And you don't go spending that 100 bucks before you realize that you can only spend three of it. And that's in the case that you don't put money towards your inventory. We'll get to that point later. Okay, so lesson three is 1% means a lot. 1% is huge. In that scenario, 1% was 33% of our profits, okay? Crazy, that is crazy. So 1% means a lot. So any, any place in your business where you can get a gain, you need to focus on that. If you can, if you can save a percentage point on, on freight somehow, that's important. If you can save a percentage point on your cost on your product buying from the manufacturer, say that you buy it in bulk and you, you can get 5% off, there you go. So 1% means a lot. All right, four is build a barrier of entry. So the problem with e-commerce, especially when you're just retailing other people's products, is there's a very low barrier to, barrier to entry. Did I say barrier of entry before? There's a barrier to entry, okay? So it's hard. You want to make it hard for other people to duplicate exactly what you're doing. So you can do that through special agreements and everything else and we'll talk about, but you need some sort of barrier to entry, some way that makes it harder for other people to compete with you. Lesson five is you make your money in the buy. So if, you know, when I sold bike parts, I sold closeouts, excess product, and if I bought the product well, we were assured to make money. If I didn't buy it well and I paid too much, then we weren't gonna make money. So there's, the lesson that I learned was you really make your money in the buying. All right, tip six is something that, you know, I did okay, but looking back, I would put a lot more focus in. And that's forge relationships that other people cannot duplicate. Uh, get special agreements from suppliers if there's a way for you to handle one of their problems and in, in exchange for that, for you handling one of their problems, getting some sort of special deal. Um, I've seen a lot of people, one person sold, it was like an, an exercise device, they were able to sell all of the refurbished product from that certain brand. And they secured $50,000 a month in sales from that product. I've seen lots of special agreements and relationships, and if you can get those, then that's gonna be one way to have a barrier of entry and to, to um, assure that you have some stable sales that aren't as open to competition. All right, tip seven is watch out for your suppliers. Be a partner. If, if, you're, buying, if you're buying product from somebody, it is a, it's a two-way relationship. They want to partner with people that are gonna look after them. So treat every deal that you get into with, uh, in, in the spirit that you're gonna be coming back to the bargaining table again and again and again and again. And these aren't just one-time deals. So treat your suppliers like partners and you're gonna be able to get a lot more out of that relationship and build build something going back to um, to point number you know four with building a barrier of entry and forging relationships that other people can't um, as you're a partner with them that's going to help you a lot all right eight um, diversify from a single platform uh, and there's a lot to be said for really just digging into like your website or ebay or amazon but but what I, what I learned is that I would have some diversity. If you were gonna choose just one platform, then choose your website because you control all the sales on it. 
uh, we, when we started selling online, we were primarily on eBay. Not, you know, 99% of our business was on eBay. It was before Amazon had really taken off. And um, that was a problem. We should have invested earlier in the sales of our, of our website. Uh, so if you're, I've seen a lot of people, I guess a word of warning, I've seen a lot of people who were totally reliant on Amazon. When something drastically changed on Amazon, then their business was put in a lot of risk. And uh, I've seen people get shut down from Amazon and then their business totally shuts off. And that's not good either. Lesson nine is put money in the bank. You, product businesses online, thrive, they, they just, they eat cash, they, they need a lot of cash, and you want to, I, we always looked really closely at our asset to debt ratio. So if we had $50,000 in debt, I wanted to have at least $100,000 in inventory. So while you're doing that, and, and when you're buying and selling and keeping the excess profits, you put it back in the business, pay down and retire some of that debt, so you have, so you have some cash. A lot of times banks, are only going to lend you um, if you have if you had a hundred thousand dollars in inventory they'll only give you about 40 percent um, of of the value of your inventory and that's on the high you know 40 50 percent would be on the real high end but they'll only give you 40 percent um, is kind of a standard so if you have a hundred thousand dollars in inventory they're only going to lend you 40 grand so put money in the bank don't don't spend it reinvest into the business and another, another word there is just really watch out for, and I guess this is a bonus lesson, watch out for inventory that's not selling and work to get rid of that. So there you go. Those are the lessons from today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create some other videos uh, that go more in-depth into Amazon, into eBay, and some of the other um, issues that, that I dealt with selling online. If you have any questions about things that you're curious about, or if you want me to make another video about, about any of these topics, just let me know. Let me know in the comments. And uh, otherwise, thanks for being here. Appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next video.